but uh, that's not <laughs> so uh, I'm so thankful to be here and to be helpful when Pastor Judy is needing help. Um, sometimes that's where we get challenged with our, our, our own generosity in our lives, is stepping outside our box mm -hmm. and experiencing life in a way we hadn't anticipated, at least for the day. And, uh, and that's where I'm at now today, and I'm, I'm thankful that I, I, I got a chance to pick up my phone and read the text and, and get up. And I have 20 minute setting of uh, Regal Free on my dryer and <laughs> pulled it all together. <laughs> so um, I thank for Pete because he teaches me how to not take a long shower because uh, sometimes I indulge in there. So um, our, our, our message today is uh, about radical generosity uh, in a world where we feel like we live in scarcity. Um, and I can imagine that that messaging is, is fed to us continually. Um, whether it's in the resources of the earth, whether it's in the water, the air, the land, whether it's in the resources of ourselves. How can we manage from day to day? How can we move forward in this world believing that we have very little to give. And my hope today is that through the messaging that you will be more than willing to give of yourself, but also to know that you have something to give. Oh, yeah. I think that's okay. important as well. Uh, when you look at the word radical, um, it is um, interesting how it's used. It's used uh, for advocating for complete social change. Another note, in chemistry, it's also used to identify a group of atoms that behave as a unit. Or, you know, you could say a group of people that act as a unit. A group of people acting as a unit that are advocating for complete and social change from what has been fed to them as normal. Oh, yes. So throughout your life, if you've been fed, to your, been fed that you, your normal is you are less than, you are outside of the, this group. You are, are a stranger to the beliefs and the, and the understandings of the people that surround you. Maybe it's time to do something radical about it. Oh, yes. And what, way, what better way to have a radical thought process um, for your own self than to be generous in that radical change? To give of yourself Knowing that, well, not even knowing, but possibly experiencing that you'll be gifted in, in, that, in that journey. And I ask for you today to think about what it would mean for you to be um, radically generous. So in preparation this morning, I was sitting there on my computer just typing like do 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 And, um, you know, people come into the, the celebration hall, like Terry and David, and they're so loving and talkative, and they want to, you know, <laughs> be with you, and you're like, love you, but <laughs> But I thought to myself, you know, it's in these moments where God puts these things in there that, you know, for me especially, uh, there's these, these events in my life where I, I'm doing something, I'm like, I've got to get done. And if something comes in my way, and I'm like, uh, uh, and then it keeps happening, I go, wait a minute. <laughs> There's God trying to talk to me again, and I'm trying to ignore the message that's happening. And so I, I thought to myself, so before I even got to that point, I said, I just turned up and I said, so just out of curiosity, what does it mean to you to be radically generous? And uh, so we shared that conversation as I'm looking up at the clock going, I hope their answer's shut. <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, me, uh, interestingly enough, it, it, it was short. And... Um, I had wrote it down here. So uh, Terry tells me, trust, uh, trusting in God is, is, is what you have to have and what you need. And then, um, or what's that David that told me that? That was me. That was you, okay. And then um, having no limits. And I believe that David shared with me, all things are possible. Yeah. And I thought to myself, well, that, that is an interesting and and a true statement in my life that I try to live by, and that I think, when I think of God, I think all things are possible. When we do communion every week, um, if you get me a lot, you might notice that I'm a little redundant on some of my messaging. Um, and uh, I, I say, 
I'm the conduit of that message from God. I really believe in, the, in, the, in these things that have to be embedded and implanted in our head that we know that these things are true. Amen. And to know that all things are possible when we're in a world where we're told things are maybe not as possible, um, I think is something that has to be repeated continually. When, when we're in a world that's lacking of, of, the, of the basic things that God provides us, um, it's helpful for me to be reminded of those things, about hope, love, peace, and joy. For the things that are sustaining us continually, instead of the things that might short-term you know, satisfy us, just for the moment, just fleeting, I'm looking for something better something more fulfilling. And through God is where I receive these gifts. And so I'm redundant in knowing this. So bear with me on that. Um, so today we live in a world of, 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 of change. For a lot of us, these changes could not come soon enough. And for some of us, the new changes that are happening are changes we are fighting against. Uh, now, if you are a person of color, if you are a person that feels marginalized, if you are a person that um, uh, is transgender, you, you may be experiencing that your time has come, or it's coming, or it's developing, however you see where you are in that. And for some of us um, who can't necessarily identify with uh, the changes that are happening, it might pose a challenge for us uh, to understand completely where we are in this world of change. But my thought process is, regardless of where you think you are, if you're giving of yourself in the process, if you are setting outside your norm, your, norm, your normal narrative that you live your life, you have the possibility to not only make change, but make an enjoyable change, a, a worthwhile change, a, a change that not um, that just not only fulfills an individual or a group of individuals, but it it, it changes everyone. Yes. And so I ask you to hold your open your heart to these things, <coughs> even when they become challenging. And the best way to relieve challenges, I think, is to ask questions. When you are in a process, when you stand together with your brothers and your sisters ready and willing to make a change, but you're not sure exactly where we're marching to, what we're doing, just turn and ask, what's going on? What are we doing? You know, Because sometimes that's all we need to do, and you'd be amazed at how many people won't criticize you or condone you for your question, but instead they live in sharing the, 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 the full messaging of what we're doing in that. Um, so I, had, uh, I wanted you to stop and think for a moment uh, of an example of a person that's, that you see as most generous in your life. A person that um, you've encountered, and I'm sure that you can think of somebody that has uh, been there for, for someone for you and has shown to be the model of generosity and stewardship in your life. And uh, whenever you feel like maybe you aren't, uh, you're, you're less than, maybe you hold that person in your heart and, and see, um, and ask God what you can learn from knowing that person or knowing of that person. For me, <clears throat> when I think of someone who has changed um, my life and has modeled generosity for me, it's my partner, Pete. So, we come from um, different backgrounds. He's a small town boy, and uh, I'm a big city boy. <laughs> <laughs> for big as Alfred can get. And, uh, you know, he'll he'll talk about his life experiences like he knows everybody in the in the town by first and last name and knows who they're related to and, and so forth. And he knows when people are in need and he's willing to help out. When we, we have a, a little movie group of people and um, we go to the movies once a week and we invite new people to come in and occasionally he he'll he'll meet someone who feels like they are a little disconnected from the group and he makes an effort to go visit with them or, or share an experience with them or make sure to pick them up or meet them and 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 he's showing his generous heart in doing so. Um, where sometimes I'm like, well they got a car, they know what they need. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, so because I you know I, I'm so worried about being an enabler of sorts uh, 
to the point where I, I probably don't show the generosity in my own heart, but then I have met Pete in my, who kind of got brought into my life who, who shows the other side of that, and, uh, and I think it's a good balance, and I'm thankful that he is, is, is there to, to show me that. Today he's being awfully generous because he's been stu struggling with a stomach uh, situation since Tuesday, and he's been feeling kind of faint and woozy, but he elected to join and be in support of me uh, in doing this today. So um, I'm thankful for you, Pete. I love you. So what? Um, so what does it mean? Um, so what do we uh, believe? What are our beliefs about giving? You know, what do you think giving is about? Why do we do it? What's the point? Any thoughts, anyone? Inclusion. Inclusion. Anyone have, have to, like a one word shout out they want to put out there? Love. Love. Generosity. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel good. Hope. Hope. The right thing to do. Right thing to do. Compassion. Compassion. So I, think, I feel like a lot of us are on the same page with that, but do you think that sometimes it's challenging to be in the process of giving at times? You know? So what, what can we do to, to make this happen in our lives? So uh, I want you to think about a few things. I want you to, to think about the fact that when God created us, God made us in a way that we were made to give. Okay? The best example of that from, the, from, from birth is probably... Uh, when you are born and you meet your mother. Amen. Because from that point on, you are completely and utterly dependent on at least her feeding you. You know, there's nobody else in the room. And, uh, and that instinct <coughs> is actually beyond instinct. It's the love kicking in. It says, let me make sure that this child I brought in this world is fed and nurtured and warm. So we are made to give um, in all that we do. So know that already. That's already inherent in you to give. Um, think of giving as a response to God's goodness. So God provides for us. And at times you might say, well, God's providing me a lot of stuff to deal with. And that may be true, but on the flip side of that, God's provided you for many things to experience and to enjoy. And in those moments when you feel like God's giving me a lot of junk to deal with, it is possible in that that God's giving you an opportunity to uh, to learn something, to to know more about yourself than than you did the day before, the moment before. And so, um, know that this is a response to God's goodness when we give. Giving could be also um, our focus on God, where we allow ourselves to see God as the source of our security. And as we give, we have that communication, that conversation with God, and we say, I am, I'm working to give of myself, of my heart, of my time, my talents, my tithing, whatever it is that I can give a lot of. Um, and through that, God, help me understand that you are the source of my security. Um, giving can also be a blessing for others. I think that's a strong thing to think about. Because there's many of us in this world that <clears throat> lack the blessings of another. You know? Or we, at least we feel that way. Um, so I, I think it's an opportunity for you to see someone that is in need, whatever the need is, and to say that I can help fulfill that in God's name. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to share. And I think that is probably one of the most challenging things for us. I think for many of us who are uh, extroverts, it might be a little bit easy just to go out there and like, look at me, I'm gonna have to do something. And we might be a little overbearing and we're like, yeah, no, don't need to. But there's, uh, for many of us, we're, we're just you know, maybe introvert or maybe we're just kind of in the middle and it might be challenging for us to even be aware to understand that we have something to give or we're concerned that what we give to somebody, they're gonna accept it or appreciate it or, and sometimes some people feel like they may be shamed in, in the act of giving, which is amazing to me, but sometimes I feel like um, that's some programming that we've been given, that when you go and you help somebody, you don't know what to expect, but expect the worst. You know, and I, 
I, I don't understand that ex exactly, but I know that it happens. And I know that we have to, for me, to move past these barriers, to know and experience the understanding that they exist, and then move past that. And, 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 you know, we are also inherently social beings, whether you'd like to believe that you're not, and you don't need anyone in your life, I'm telling you that's not true. You do need somebody in your life. And so in the moments when you feel like you have no power to understand what's going on in your life, reach out to someone and ask, can you help me to understand this? And I don't mean reach out in a way that's like, oh, here's all my junk, here's all, it's all about me, please just, you know, be me, you know, understand me, love me, be me. It's not necessarily that. It's, it's more like, here's what's going on in my world. Here's what's going on in my life. This is what I'm struggling with. This is what I need. Can you help me? And accept what you can get and accept what you can't get. Um, be willing to break a hold of the thing that you can offer someone. Now, it could be money, but it could be love. So, you know, it could be your time. Some people might say, you know, I worked all my life. I'm retired now. I, you know, I want that time for myself. Which is great, but you know there might be someone that needs your time as well. There might be a place like this that needs your time as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you may have an abundance of money, and you might tell yourself, "Well, there's a reason why I have abundance of money because I don't give it out freely, <laughs> <laughs> and it seems to be working for me. So why don't I need give anymore?" Stop and think about what power you have. And what's the use of power if it just sits in one jar? You know, it just, just sits there, it does nothing. Except show, or allow you to feel gratification for achieving it. Power does the best when it's being used. When we flip on the switch, for good. But when we flip on the power here to turn on the lights, that's power in action. You know, it's, something's happening. Before that, it was just sitting in some I, I don't know, capacitor, I'm just throwing off some term, I don't really know. But um, <laughs> waiting for us to use it, you know? And it can just sit there continually, or, it, or we could decide to use it. Whether it's um, your talent. Some people have a belief that, you know, I spent all my life learning how to play a piano, how to sing, how to perform for the masses, how to create artwork, to knit, whatever it is. Why would I freely want to give that to someone else when I can take all of the time that I spent knowing how to do this to create a life of abundance for myself? That can actually be a true statement. That truly can be a true statement, but where's your abundance? You know, do you want an abundance in just one part of your house? Or do you want the whole house of your being to be fulfilled with abundance? Are you willing to give something that you cherish to someone else and possibly experience something in return? Maybe you won't, but I think just the act of giving is enough to, to experience. Giving joyfully is important. Yes. And I say that so much just, uh, you know, I've been here at MCC for a while. There's been people that have been here longer than me. And I think we all have good hearts. And we do want to give. I think sometimes we, some of us experience burnout. So when we do our little weekly schedule, we're like, oh, it's me again to serve communion. It's me again to usher. Do I have to? You know. So you are giving. You know, you're giving. But are you giving with a joyful heart? Because I will tell you that. Um, giving with a joyful heart serves two, heart serves two purposes. It's one is your, your, your purpose. You know, why do you want to do anything if it has any level of torture in it? You know, but whatever you're exuding, believe it or not, people can see. People are aware. May not be in your words. May not be in your actions. It might just be in you, in your demeanor, in your presence, in your whatever people want to call it. 
But have you ever walked up to somebody and you're like, hi, hey, you know, I don't know about you. I'm getting a vibe about you. It's possible that you're working through something, that or that person's working through something, and, and you're sensing that. You may not know what it is, the origins, understanding, you know, that's that's not relevant at the moment, at the point, but what's relevant is the fact that you're you're picking up on that line. That's what we're about as humans. That's why I say we're social creatures. We're meant to be with one another, to learn from one another, to help one another, experience one another. And sometimes we experience people in ways that we don't know. We experience when you're feeling like down, when you're experiencing like you're less than, when you're experiencing like you're just fed up with things. Even though you don't tell us these things. So know these, know that. So that when you go through life, if you can experience life through the eyes of joy, joyfulness, mm -hmm. that you can transform what people receive from you, but also what you receive from yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're, again, if you're having a problem with that, mm -hmm. someone say, I'm having a problem with that. I want to give, but I'm having a problem with that. Because just sharing that information might open up some doors. You know, it might be just as simple act as, well, let's pray for you. Let's support you at least in a prayer. That's the least we could do, right? Or maybe I have another resource for you to help you in this life experience that you're going through right now. Or a story to share, I don't know. But we have to communicate that with one another. So here's, those are some ideas about, about <coughs> the belief in sharing, uh, giving and, and how you can get to that point. The other thing I think it's important, and we're in a world today of social media where everyone shares everything, you know. Just, well, maybe sometimes too much, let's try. But it is what it is. We are in a world where people want to share it. I guess it's also part of our social nature. We want to interact with one another, even when we don't want to hear some of the stuff we need to hear, or want to hear. So, my, my suggestion to you in that is that one way you can help share the messaging in, and radically being generous is to lead by example. To share your, your giving with others that you did it. Some people might say, oh, that's just boasting. You're just trying to prop yourself on a, on a pedal. So I suppose it's in the messaging, how you share this information. But I think to me, it's what you're sharing is that you're an example of giving. For a person that maybe doesn't understand what that means, what that looks like, how does it feel? That they're struggling with that with themselves. So if you go out there and say, I did something very unusual today for myself. I had, uh, saw a person in the park who looked like their life is filled with struggles. And I just thought, I'm just gonna go to the fast food place, pick up a Happy Meal or whatever it is and give it to them. No questions asked, just there it is. If they eat it, they eat it, they don't, they don't. But in that experience, I'd like to share that with you. And I'm, I'm, so I ask for you to, to think about the sharing that you do, or that you have that, and share that information with people. It's important. Um, are you modeling what it means to be a good steward? Um, that's, a, that's an interesting one. I don't know if I want to get too much into that. But I will say this, that um, evaluate what you're doing and how you're doing it. You know, why are you giving what you give? You know, is it to benefit you or is it to benefit the world outside of you? I think would be the biggest question I could offer you to think about and to pray to God about. And then lastly, do we... Um, do we talk differently to people or know that there's differences in people and their needs? Do we truly know that? Or do we just make this subject, well, anyone could use a hundred dollar bill? You know. <coughs> it could be. But I go to David and I say, Well, here's a hundred dollars. And I'm sure he's gonna appreciate that. He's gonna be like, oh that's that's great. But you know, in actuality car is broken down and I have a full-time job and I can't get it to the shop I could really use someone to go take it for me <laughs> that's all I need I just need someone to take my car I can go you know and uh, look at uh, Emerald and say you know uh, Emerald I really want to uh, offer you my time 
um, I, I, I heard you're working on a project, and I just wanted to just offer, I want to be there for you, I want to do all I can for you. And she's like, in her head, she's thinking, well, I have my little day planner, I can completely have my act together, I don't need time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I could sure use someone who's talented in my life with this project I'm working on. You know, so offer, you know, why don't you offer me your talent? You know, I could look at Dorothy and say, Dorothy, I know how to crochet stuff. I'm sure you could use it. There you go. And you're like, well, that's a great talent, but I need some money. <laughs> so, you know, just know, you know, know the people around you. Get to know them and know what their needs are. And then be able to open your heart and give generously. Be radical in your experience. As we move each day, each week, each month, each year in our lives, sometimes some of us might experience like, ah, it's the same old, same old life experience. But God has offers us the ability to be radically generous in our lives. And in that radical experience, we create new and interesting and loving experiences that we carry on in our heart as we move through life. I ask you to open yourself to that. When you feel like life has become a little bit challenging or mundane, take a moment to shake it up in your life. And to know that God's there for you to support you in that. Know that you have a loving family here at this church that is there for you and is willing to support you in that as well. I hope that this messaging touches, touches your heart and you experience life renewed. Amen. Thank you.